Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean. I'm here with another video. It's uh, 1 32 in the afternoon on the east coast of Florida on a Friday afternoon. And today is the 20th. Happy birthday, cuz. Today's my little cousin's birthday. I think he turns 32 or something like that. 34, something like that. So, uh, happy birthday, Paul. And yesterday was my other uh, cousin's birthday, Joey. Happy birthday, Joey. So, one was born on the 19th. Uh, and the other guy was born on the 20th, and they're one year and one day apart, and it's pretty funny. So, uh, they're in Philadelphia right now. God bless you. Anytime you want to come down to Florida, cuz, my door is open. So, let's talk about some stuff real quick. Uh, last year, uh, around October, I started playing tennis again after not playing after, uh, for about 25 years. And these are the rackets I used to play with. I had the same ones for pretty much all my life. You know, uh, I the only time I didn't play with this racket is a few times I tried the Yonix RD7 because Crick was playing with that, Aaron Crickstein, and I, he's one of my favorite players, him and Agassi. And then I tried the Prince Graphite 2, which is a little was a little bigger. And that was the thing back in the day. And it's not so much now in modern time, people play with uh, bigger head rack, uh, try bigger head sizes, especially older people that play doubles. That's when the hammer came out and things like that, the Wilson profiles. These aren't actually uh, the 2.7s. These are the first ones to come out and they're made in West, uh, West Germany uh, before the wall came down. Um, so these are, are made of graphite, uh, a Kelvar, and I like that. And these newer rackets aren't made as, you know, as, as nice as these. If I could actually have a racket made custom, I'd have the same racket here but I'd make it uh, 98 to 100 square inches and I would make the frame a little thinner. It wouldn't be such a bigger wide body, but I would use Kelvar because I like the stiffness when you're volleying and when you're hitting shots on the run and stuff, it's a solid racket and nobody's gonna knock it out of your hand when you're serving, uh, you know, return and serve. So over the last year, I have been playing with different types of rackets. Recently, I bought these uh, Pure Drive 110 uh, Babolats for my wife because she just started playing. Well, we're not technically married. I've been with her nine years and I, and I love her and stuff. So she moved in together nine years. Next year will be 10. So Ashley is a very good athlete. She's good at basketball. So she wanted to start playing tennis. So at first I got her the Wilson Tour Rackets. They were 110 also, but they were just flimsy. Uh, they were made of graphite and she's a pretty strong lady so i got her these the bobolettes these are a version of what um andy riddick was playing with but obviously smaller they're light and they're head heavy you know so i was playing pretty decent with these rackets you know but uh i like smaller headed rackets and i was going back and forth to this profile which is just outdated. It's very heavy. It's 13 ounces and almost 350 grams un, unstrong. So around, you know, when it's strong, it's about 360 grams. And that's just something I've been playing with my whole life. I never had tennis elbow. I string my rackets. These rackets, I was stringing at 35 pounds on the mains and 33 to 32 on the crosses, a couple pounds lighter. So I got my other racket back and this was the new one that I'm gonna start playing with. It's the it's the Wilson uh, V6 uh, without all that junk that they added to it. This is just a, a regular Wilson V6 uh, blade and uh, it's 98 square inches. And I had this rack, it's re-strung because I, the tie came undone when I was hitting. So my man put, uh, my buddy Greg put a uh, Hyper G in this and he strung the mains uh, at 45 pounds as I was asking him and the crosses at 43. So I have the machine set up. I'm gonna work on volleying today. This morning, I thought I was playing tennis uh, doubles at 9 a.m. So I take seizure medicine, you know? So uh, I get a call at like 7.30. They're like, are you showing up to the courts today? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm supposed to be there at nine. He's like, no, we're playing at 7.30. So I literally just like, cause I live five minutes down the street here. I literally had to just take a couple sips of, med uh, sips of coffee then I, um, you know, I took my medicine. I'm out the door eating a fucking granola bar and running my ass off. And so I'm out, I'm, you know, I'm out here. And then they had already been playing for like a half an hour warming up. So I'm thrown into this, you know, this doubles match that four oh four five players. And, uh, 
wasn't even warmed up. They're like, you want to serve? I'm like, sure, why not? You know, what the hell at this point, it's FBI. So I'm playing with this huge racket, dude. And it's strung at like 53 pounds. And my first serve was pretty decent, but I just couldn't get no kick or, you know, I was hard. It's really hard to get kick or a real top, heavy top spin on the serve. So I double faulted a couple times, like twice in, in, in three sets, which isn't bad. But I don't double fault. See, that's one of the things I don't give away points. And I was returning pretty good. But I was playing this guy today. Every damn shot this dude hit, he hit every line, every lob line. It was crazy. I got pulled off the court again, and I had to go around the post and hit this shot to get it in play. And they're like, oh, my God, that was amazing. I'm like, dude, can you please just hit the ball down the middle of the court and stop having my fat ass run all over this court? I was like, I'm getting tired. I hadn't even had a cup of coffee yet. You guys are relentless. So everybody's laughing and stuff. But I don't like losing, and I'm not a bad sport or nothing. But yeah, I was at such a disadvantage today, and I knew it, you know? So when you get in those kind of mindset sets, just like, okay, work on something. You know, like today I was like, okay, I'm going to get every return in. And I'm gonna come in behind my returns and I'm gonna hit this ball. To, so I'm gonna slice, or if I decide to slice it, I'm gonna chip it real low to their backhand. And I'm expecting them to hit the, a volley, you know, in a certain area. And I'm gonna take it and put it away. And I did that a few times and I, and I started getting in a match. And then they hit a short uh, lob and it bounced in the middle of the court. And I took it and knocked it over the fence. I was just so pissed at the way I was playing earlier. I just jumped up and smacked it as hard as I could. I said, I wasn't caring if it was in or not. It bounced over the fence. They're all laughing like, dude. I was like, now I can play some tennis. I'm feeling a little better. I was being grumpy. And they were talking about Scott Brody from Real Tennis. They call him Angry Old Man. I started thinking about that in my head and it made me laugh. So thanks, Scott, for helping me get through my match today because I was laughing because I was like, am I acting like this guy right now? Yeah, because I, so I, I used a couple of F-bombs underneath my breath when I was getting there. I said, like, can I get a fucking serve in today? And this jet, this nice lady that I know, she walks by every day. She, she's a woman of color. She's in her 70s. And she, and I, I was like, oh, I'm, excuse me, ma'am, for my language. She's like, it's okay, honey. And I was like, I apologize. I was like, uh, I can't get a first serve to save my life. She goes, that's okay. And I was like, all right. So then I'm like, I you got to catch yourself, you know, when in the middle of stuff, cause you're getting in a battle. And I'm like, dude, we're down three, two right now. We're on serve and I'm serving 40, 30. And I just got to, this guy was missing his backhand. So I used to slice out wide, pulled him off the court. And then my buddy Don put the ball away. So we were having fun. Um, and then I didn't even win a set today. <laughs> so uh, it was crazy. I was like, whoever's got me as a partner right now, I feel bad for them. So anyway, this is what's up. It's hard to get consistent and play consistent playing with three different types of tennis rackets. And that's what I've been going through. So I'm going to stick with this racket. And if I'm going to get another one too, because I, um, you know, I broke a string on this thing. So then I was playing with these rackets again. And I don't want to keep going back and forth because... I serve very accurate with this racket because it's a smaller head and I really pay attention and I, the ball grips on the on the on the on the strings better, so I can you know serve really uh, a lot more accurate than with this with this one except for the profile, like just from playing with this thing all my life I can hit pretty much my you know anywhere on the court with the on my serve with this racket, you know I it, it just placement is is sick. But as I said, it's heavier and it's outdated and I just love these rackets because they're never gonna make anything like this ever unless you've got mad money and you can get them to do a special racket for you. So that's where I'm at on it. So yeah, I've been playing, I'm playing with the Wilson Blade V6. It doesn't have all that counter stuff in it. It's just a plain 98 and you have to get used to the small radius because like I said, look at the difference between these two rackets. It's 110 over 98. You don't have to look at the ball all the time hitting with a 110. You can cheat, you know? But when you're volleying and you're at the net and people are ripping balls at you, with this little racket, you really have to pay attention. And it's kind of flimsy when a big shot hits, so you have to absorb it. So enough talk. I just wanted to let you know, let you know, you know say thank you to everybody. And, and I really appreciate your support. I really do. It means a lot to me. And I'm working hard for everybody. So let's get back to what I say before I hit off the tennis ball machine. Um, I'd say last year I was a probably 3-0 player coming in, except my serve was really good still, and I, I was working on it. 
and in my vol I have really good volley so I was doing trick shots making the ball spin back over the net and stuff like that teaching people how to do that oh come on buddy Jeez, I don't want to crack my racket talking to you so yeah and then now uh, if I'm being I'm gonna be honest with myself I feel uh, you know if I was to get rated in doubles I'd be a 4-0 player in doubles and a, and a real high 3-5 player in, in singles um, I just get have to get my movement down a little bit better in singles and have more confidence coming into the net because when I play doubles I'm very confident I don't I, I don't think about this in volleys I just go at it I'm short I actually shrunk like four inches I was five eight around five eight and now I'm like five 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 six something like that it's it's ridiculous so you know people love me but I'm able to jump and I, I have pretty good jumps and uh, so that helps out so being shorter, you have to play the game a little different than, than people that are taller. I'm at a disadvantage against every person I play that's tall because they're hit, they're able to hit their serves better and stronger. So, but I'm lower to the ground and I use that to my advantage. So we're gonna try these volleys. I got that thing, the oscillator on, and God, man, when this ball, when this ball machine's turned up, like it's turned up right now. When the ball bounces, it's like I'm hitting with Agassi or Novak or somebody with so much topspin. The ball literally kicks up off the court. It's so crazy. And then because so, some of the balls are flat, then some of them don't do that. And then some of them do. So it's like really weird. So we're going to see how this thing works out for volume. I don't, I don't know. I didn't turn it on. I, I'm going to I got these cones set up. So I'm going to try to hit between the cones and try to actually hit some of these cones and work on on accuracy with my volleys. Because uh, I just got the racket back today. So we'll see what happens. Put these on off, put these over here. I gotta loosen up. playing at 
levels and 4-0 levels, you can't let none of these volleys keep coming back to you. You can't hit it to back to the person that you're playing against because they will put it away. So, you missed that one. So you want to try to angle it so where they're going to run and there's no pace on it. So even if you miss hit that like that did, it's still short and at an angle. You have to keep your eye on the ball. Let's try another one. You have to keep your eye on the ball. That's the most important thing. Just like in baseball. And really, if you're learning, you should be using an orange ball or a red ball. You should be using these yellow balls. And that's where pride comes in, people start playing and they're learning the game and they're trying to hit with balls that are really heavy and bounce with a lot of bounce. So you have to really pay attention to what's going on uh, and watch the ball every time and let the racket do the work. Like I'm getting behind me and there's a reason for that on those shots because I'm trying to absorb the ball. So these balls are flat. So if you're playing against somebody in the newer balls, they're gonna bounce better. But it's good to use, sometimes it's good to use flatter balls because they're heavier and they're harder to hit, to hit with. And you're trying to accuracy. That's what you're trying to do. We're trying to get right there. Too good. Too good. Too good ball machine. But I'm gonna get a different ball machine because uh, it sticks a lot. Let's see if I can get it to go over. Damn, almost. I missed that because I'm trying to make the ball jump back over the net. Like that, almost. And you just, to do that, you just gotta, cut up. sorry. You just gotta kind of be loose. Watch, I'll try it. Make the ball come over the net. That's why I'm hitting it like that. But what is practice getting them in? I don't want to go bad habits. So I got pretty good touch. That's why I was telling my uh, show and spray uh, for winners tennis, winners only, only tennis. He can come into that net and get more confident at the net by working on volleys or whatever. And with that big serve he has, he can win a lot of extra free points without having to put a lot of effort in, in it because he's a big guy, he's a big dude, so it'd be hard to pass him. So the only way to really get him at the net would be hit at his feet and make him pop the ball up. But he's got a decent overhead too. I just think it comes down to confidence with people. Everybody has that. And what I would suggest him is him to start playing more doubles. And a lot of other guys like Alex to start playing more doubles and also uh, Matthew. Matthew's been playing a little more doubles and he's gotten a lot better. Doubles help you a lot. So, that's it for that. Doubles help a lot in, in, in tennis. Uh, that's why a lot of the pros were doing playing doubles. Nadell, Novak, uh, Stefan, Titi Pass. You know, and everybody's crack, you know, busting his balls about what he's playing. He should just start playing doubles and work on that and then go into singles again because his confidence level is shot and his head's not in the right place. So you can see 
uh, some of the trick shots we can try, you know, when you're doing this. But when you're normally following, you want to get the ball out in front of you. You don't want to leave it behind you. And as I said, the, the reason why I was doing that behind me is because I'm absorbing the ball and letting the ball just using the pace of the machine to, to use it against it, so to speak. So you can see some of the ones I made. I almost made them over the net. I was trying to trick shot where it bounces on my on their side and bounces back over. And maybe if a couple of them were new balls, it would have done that. But out of 100 balls, with me, without me goofing off, I probably hit 90, 90, 90 of them in, you know? And that's good. So we want to, you want to practice getting the ball in. And like I say, the better, the more people that you play that are better than you or at your level, you're going to have less chance to mess around with that stuff. If you hit that ball back to them and it's short, uh, watch the dude from, uh, from tennis tunes and stuff. He's been playing a lot of doubles. You hit a short ball to that guy and he's got a chance to set up. He, 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 he the world is his oyster. He can hit a lob over your head or pass you down the middle or try to pass you by the, by the, by the corner, you know, out wide. I mean, you got to stand fast at that net. And if you see the lob coming, because people bring it back, you can kind of see how they're going to face the, the racket head because it it's a normal way to scooch it up and hit it over someone's head. Start backpedaling sideways like this because if that ball is short, you got one or two options. You could take it in the air and, you know, wait for it to come down to a level where you can feel comfortable hitting it or you can let it bounce. But I never let that ball bounce if I can help it because you don't know what kind of spins on the ball and you can set up to hit the ball at a proper overhead and that guy could have spin on that ball and it can it just throw, throw you completely off. So I try to take the ball in the air where there's no, with nothing affects it. And uh, I see a lot of pros doing that stuff. They're teaching tennis and they're teaching people how to volley and they're not teaching them to take the ball in the air or telling them to let the ball bounce. Well, if you play against some of the players that I play against and other guys that you guys will probably play against too, they have some of these people got so much slice on the ball or spin on the ball when you go to heat to, to take, instead of taking an overhead, now you're taking a forehand volley, high forehand volley, and you're going to hit it and it's spinning out of weight away from you. So now you're going from having an offensive position into a more of a defensive position. Not because you gotta, you gotta adjust the racket now. You got the only, you're going like this. You can't go like that. You have to go like this to, to defend yourself. So the ball's coming. You're like, oh man. And then you, the reason why you're doing this part with your legs, like you're standing there and you're using your legs. That's the part that's used giving you, uh, giving you power, and you're holding the continental grip. And the same with this. So, because I'm short, a lot of balls come off. I have to hit like that. I have to hit jump off and not and not even look and try backhand volleys like that and a lot of them go in but it ain't proper technique you know and the way I look at it, as long as that damn ball goes in I don't care how I look <laughs> so you can see that this machine will get you going and you know teach you how to how to volley you go out here and, and just keep playing and hitting and you'll get better and better you can't get better by watching it on YouTube. You have to come out and do shit, okay? If you have a goal, like a lot of the guys my age on here that are following me and, and they're awesome people. Let's say right now you're playing at a three, five level. Well, um, try to go on, on Facebook or try to go around your neighborhood and find people at your, at your level and then even better and find a hitting partner or if you can afford it, look into getting a, you know, a decent tennis ball machine and just work on things that you want to do to, you know, to, that you feel they're fun for you to do in tennis. Like if you have fun just ripping winners on your forehand on return or serve, then you set that tennis ball machine up and you practice that. If you like hitting a two-hander or, or you're, a lot of got older guys now are trying one-handers and stuff, then you have to practice learning how to hit that because we grew up playing with two hands and a one-handed backhand is a completely different animal than a two-handed like you're bringing your two hands back like this and look how your feet are you, if you're standing like this you're hitting the way you need to uh, sideways but with a one-hander you're stepping back you're putting your foot and you're actually coming across your body differently and this back leg is still coming out but your foot your front foot is differently placed differently 
So you're like, you're shuffling and then you're like this. Watch, watch better, you know? Watch the people that you wanna, you know, like if you wanna learn how to hit a one-handed backhand, watch that dude stand. Watch Pete Sampras. Watch even, uh, you know, even um, McEnroe. All the good ones that hit that, McEnroe style is unconventional. He has a very unconventional style, but his, he, no one in the world I've ever seen can volley like that man. His hands and, and eye coordination is exceptionally, ridiculously good. So, and Sampras was like that too. Sampras was an athlete and people didn't give him real credit for his athletic ability. So, we're gonna get this thing going again. And we're gonna try some same thing. We're gonna do some volleys. And then I'm gonna try to set it up where it shoots up in the air and I can practice some overheads. I don't even know how in the hell I'm gonna do that because it's very windy. And as I said, this thing turned up, the spin on this ball is where, oh my God, if you could do a stand there, that ball would jump so fast, you're gonna have to, it's like a hundredth of a second to react to it. So a lot of times when you see me miss a ball coming by, that's because the ball is moving so fast and it has so much spin on it that I, I had to literally bring my, for me to hit that, I had to bring the racket back before the ball even come over the net for me to even get a chance to hit it. It's like swinging at a pitch, you know? So we're gonna work on that. And if you wanna do trick shots like I was showing you, you have to, you have to take, you know, hold the continental grip and let the ball absorb off the racket. Just kind of, you know, do your own style, but let the ball absorb off the strings. And so far, this thing feels pretty good. I might just set it up so I can hit off of this thing, man, because I wanna see, well, yeah, cause he restrung my racket today. I wanna see what, you know, how it feels hitting with it. So I might do that since we did some volleys. And then I'll do volleys again later. So I appreciate everybody watching. Thanks for the support. And we'll be back soon.